Exercise 235 is kind of like exercise 234. You're looking for places in this molecule where it's a little sticky, in other words, a little has places where it has a little charge. Um, but in this one, instead of looking for where it has some slight positive charge like we were doing in 234, we're looking for places where there's slight negative charge. So, um, in order to do that, to identify that a little more carefully, we're going to use resonance structures. And the purpose here is not to draw every resonance structure. The purpose is to draw all the resonance structures that show negative charge moving around. So we get to see every atom that has negative charge on it. Okay, the resonance patterns that do that are not all of them. So for example, on the far right, when you move those single and double bonds in a ring, none of the formal charges change. So this would not show us a change in any of the positions of negative charge. So although there may be uh, resonance structures that have that, that this is involved in with this molecule, we're not going to pay attention to that because our goal here is not to draw every resonance structure. Our goal is to see where all the negative charges are. In other words, to draw all the resonance structures that move negative charges. And that fifth pattern doesn't do that. Um, so likewise, with the fourth pattern, that could create a negative charge if you have it in a molecule. Um, we don't have that to start with, though. So we won't end up running into that, sec that fourth pattern in this particular molecule. You'll notice nowhere in this molecule do you see a pi bond between atoms of differing electronegativity. There's a lot of pi bonds, but they're all between they're all between um, carbons. And we would only need this fourth pattern to create the negative charge that we'd move around. So we could look at that. It would just take extra time. I'm going to cancel it out because it's not going to let us see any new negative charges, which is what our goal is here goal is to see all the negative charges. Um, a lone pair next to a positive charge, we also won't end up seeing that. And the allylic positive charge, we also <laughs> won't end up seeing. Now this very clearly doesn't give us any information about negative charges. That just moves positive charges around. And that ends up also being the case for this. So. For this particular molecule, because it doesn't have a conjugate, uh, it doesn't have a pi bond between two atoms of differing electronegativity, the only pattern that will be moving negative charge around will be the pattern of having an allylic lone pair. So that's the pattern we're going to use here to move the negative charge around to see all the different places where the negative charge could go. Okay, and the reason why I mean you. Are certainly are more than welcome to look at all five patterns. It will just take a really long time to draw every single resonance structure for this. So I'm not looking at these in order to save time. I'm just focusing on this, the pattern that tells me about the negative charge, because that's all that this question is asking for. All right, so we draw our resonance structure, our resonance brackets that let people know none of these structures is the true structure. The true structure is the average of them all. And I'm just going to draw our molecule in. And in the top right here, I'm just going to expand that, that bond. This OH is really oxygen bonded to hydrogen. I also want to fill in the lone pairs here. So the oxygen only has four electrons around it as drawn, so we have to add two lone pairs to give the total of eight. And now we can see that those electrons are allylic to this double bond. They're one atom away from an atom in the double bond. So anytime you have allylic lone pairs, those lone pairs go toward the double bond, and the double bond, the, the pi electrons in the double bond go on to the next atom. So we'll draw the special resonance error that tells you to take the average of everything inside the brackets. I'm going to go really fast with uh, moving the electrons and also with the formal charges because we've done so much practice with that already. Let me actually make that a little 
smaller just so we can fit more in. So here, these electrons are going to be, oops, those electrons at the tail of the curved arrow are going to be moving, so those won't be there anymore. And the arrow is pointing at this bond, so we'll have a new bond there. The tail of the curved arrow, those electrons won't be there anymore. And the head of the curved arrow is pointing at this atom, so we'll have a lone pair there now. And that's a place where we have a negative charge. Carbon with a lone pair is a, has a negative charge. So we've got that. And this oxygen now has a positive charge. Okay, so again, we're looking for allylic lone pairs. We did the first molecule. For the second one, you can see that lone pair that we created there, that new one on the carbon, is also allylic. So we'll take this molecule And these allylic lone pairs will go to form a pi bond, giving the lone pairs there onto the next, another carbon. So the electrons at the tail of the curved arrow move, they go to create a bond. These other electrons at the tail of the curved arrow move. They are going on to an atom, so they create a lone pair. And what you'll see is that this now, that carbon has a zero formal charge, and the one at the bottom left has a negative charge. All right. We now, that lone pair is allylic to yet another pi bond. So... We'll do that curved arrow pattern. The pi electrons go, I'm sorry, the, uh, the lone pair, allylic lone pair, goes toward the double bond, and the pi electrons in the double bond goes away from the lone pair. So in that pattern, these electrons are moving away, so they go away. They go to create, they're pointing at the bond, so they go to create a bond there. These electrons here are moving away, and they go onto this carbon here, which now has a negative charge, and the other carbon does not. Okay, this lone pair is allylic to yet another bond, so we'll draw another resonance structure for it. So, this lone, allylic lone pair goes to form a pi bond toward the double bond, and the pi electrons in the double bond go onto the atom away from the allylic lone pair. Oops. And so these electrons at the tail of this curved arrow, they're going to be moving. They take their negative charge with them. If you form a bond here, the electrons at the tail of the other curved arrow are moving, they go onto an atom, they're going to form a lone pair there. That lone pair is allylic to one last pi bond, so we'll draw one more resonance structure. The lone pair goes toward the pi bond. The pi electrons go away from the allylic lone pair. And so these electrons at the tail, those are moving away. They take their negative charge with them. The head of the curved arrow is where they're going a bond there. The electrons at the tail of that curved arrow going away. The head is pointing right there, so that's where they arrive as a negative, as a lone pair, and that carbon has a negative charge on it. Okay, so we did this very fast because um, all of the, the steps this is building on, finding formal charge, seeing invisible hydrogens, 
Um, if we added those in, this, this problem would take a very long time. Another shortcut we're using is we're not drawing all five of the resonance patterns. This is not all of the resonance structures this molecule makes. Um, it's just the ones that show us how the negative charge moves. So notice I'm going to draw a dot here for the carbons that have a negative charge on them. So at the top there, bottom right, bottom left, at the bottom right, here, and at the end. So the true molecule doesn't look like any of these ever. It only always looks like the, the average of them all. Now this will be a little skewed because we didn't draw every rest in the structure, but we will get a good sense of where the molecule, the true molecule, has a negative charge. So all of these bonds are somewhere in between single and double bonds. So they're very rigid. They're not all, none of those bonds are able to rotate. And that rigidity means this molecule would fit more reliably into a receptor pocket. The places where we saw there are a slight negative charge, we drew them in in the resonance structures. We know it's right here, oops, here. We saw it was at the bottom left, the bottom right, here, and here. So each of those places would have a slight negative charge. The other place that would have a slight negative charge uh, would actually be the oxygen, um, and that's just because of the electronegativity of it. But we won't worry about that here. Okay, so that would be the true structure of that molecule, and you can see that, the, that unlike the original structure that we had here, which didn't have many places where you'd, find, or you'd expect a negative charge, there are lots of places where there's a negative charge. The significance of that is that those are the places where a positively charged species would be attracted. So those places might be attracted to a carbon, for example, that has a positive charge on it. So those would attract that carbon at all of those positions. And we would have never seen that if we hadn't drawn these resonance structures. So we took some, we did some things fast, the formal charges, for example, and the curved arrows, and we also took a shortcut. We didn't draw all of the rest of the structures, we just drew the ones that would move the negative charge. But you could see how you could do that to get an approximate sense of where there's negative charge on a molecule, and so where that molecule might react with something that has a positive charge.